<coughs> Your Excellency, ladies, so and, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. And thank you for joining us today for the first online edition of the Dubai Global Partnership Series. The Global Partnership Series aims to open the dialogue between Dubai and various markets with great potential in their economic development and their role, and their role in the future of international business community. Today's event will highlight the areas of strength in Vietnam and Dubai, as well as look at the potential synergies between both markets. We are proud to say that the UAE has been Vietnam's number one trading partner in the region across different key sectors. And today we will explore ways of capitalizing on the existing relation to build new allies of mutual, of mutual benefit. I would like to bring to your attention the key interactive elements of our webinar today. All delegates have the opportunity to send questions to the speakers throughout the webinar as well as take part in the number of polls that we will be pushing throughout the webinar as well. Both functions can be found at the bottom of your screen. If you wish to network with your fellow delegates who are present today, please feel free to use the dialog box to the right of your screen. And I would like to inform you that this platform will remain open for networking after the panel discussion as well. And now, before we get started, I would like to I would like to set the scene with a short video about getting back into business. We made you a promise that we would see you soon. That time has come. We're ready to welcome you with open doors, to share your journey of discovery, making your well-being our priority. And today, we make you a new promise that our home, the Bay, is ready for you to visit once again. We promised to make it extraordinary. Now, we promise it will be so much more. We are ready when you are. To start proceedings, please allow me to introduce His Excellency Majid Al Gharir, Chairman of the Dubai Chamber of Commerce and Industry, for his welcome address. Bismillah ar-Rahman 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 ar-Rah
to expand cooperation between our countries, especially in the field of trade, investment, commodities, renewable energy, infrastructure, tourism, and agriculture. Dubai is a fast becoming a magnet for innovative startups from around the world. And we see a major opportunity for startups in Vietnam and other Asian market to benefit from the various competitive advantages and resources that this city can offer them. Our discussion today will offer a valuable insight that will help create a roadmap for a future developing UAE Vietnam trade ties and shaping the agenda for Dubai Chamber first ever global business forum Asia. This high level business forum taking place in Dubai during upcoming Expo 2020 provide an ideal platform to showcase the vast economic potential that Vietnam has to offer while it's, it will also examine key trends that are reshaping Asian markets. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude by extending our warm hand of friendship to our esteemed Vietnamese part partners and guests. By building bridges of cooperation through a platform like this, like this one, I am condemned that we can create a mutual benefit and economic growth. Thank you for your attendance and participation. I wish you all a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. I would like to introduce His Excellency Nguyen Man Tuan, Ambassador of the Republic of Vietnam to the United Arab Emirates for his opening remarks. Sai Sai Gurai Gurai Chairman of Chairman of Dubai Chamber Dubai of Chamber of Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to attend and deliver my opening speech at the Vietnam UAE Business Virtual Forum today. I would like to express my sincere thank to Ministry of Industry and Trade of Vietnam, Dubai Indust Dubai Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and Vietnam Trade Office in UAE for their efforts to hold this event. I noted with satisfaction that DCCI chose Vietnam as the first partner for holding this virtu virtual forum after the COVID-19 epidemic. It shows that DICC in particular and the UAE business community in general highly appreciate the Vietnam's potential economy and, corporates, and the corporate opportunities between the two countries. This virtual forum is very effective and important in the current well-known situation. The forum is held with the participation of the ministries, groups, and companies from the Vietnam and UAE in many sectors, from trading to investment. This, this, this demonstrates that the cooperation between the two countries is big and has great potential. I expect that the efforts from the two sides will create the favorable, favorable conditions and further enhance the economic, trade, industry, and investment cooperation relationship between Vietnam and the UAE. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to introduce the brief overview of the several economic, uh, social economic achievements of Vietnam in the recent time. With the regards of with the regard to Vietnam's economic development, GDP in the past nine months of the 2020 has increased by 2.12 percent. 
an increase by 3.68% in the first quarter, 0.39% in the second quarter, and 2.62% in the third quarter. Vietnam is one of the few countries all over the world has the positive GDP growth in this difficult time. In the context of the complicated development in COVID-19, negatively affecting all social economic fields, the country's economy continues its positive growth, is on the right direction of the economic re recovery. This is prevention and determination. The government, people, and the business community are highly determined to effectively implement the goals of both preventing the epidemic and developing social economy. In the context of the COVID-19 epidemic, Vietnam's efforts remain positive growth. The domestic economic sector has emerged. The export and import turnover in the past nine months has increased as compared with the same period last year. Total import and export turnover of nine months of 2020 was estimated 388.73 billion US dollar with an export turnover of 202.86 billion US dollar, a rise of 4.2% and an import turnover of 185.87 billion US dollars, reduction of 0.8% uh, over the same period last year. The trade balance in the last nine months has seen an estimated surplus of nearly seven up seven hello 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 Hello? So the trade balance in the, past, in the last nine months is an estimated surplus of nearly 17 billion US dollar. The foreign direct investment during this period, including registered capital, adjusted investment capital, and the total value of capital contribution reached 21.2 billion US dollar. Vietnam has been actively integrating into the regional and the global economy. Vietnam is an active member of ASEAN, APEC, ASEM, WTO. Vietnam has participated in the ASEAN China FTA, ASEAN India FTA, ASEAN South Korea FTA, ASEAN Australia, New Zealand, FTA, and also CPTPP. Recently, Vietnam and EUA has passed the EVFTA, which opens the door to the EU, the third business partner of Vietnam. Vietnam also has signed many bilateral FTAs with many countries. Vietnam's economy is now widely open to the world. The import, the export import turnover is, in a, is nearly triple its GDP. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, we have noted with satisfaction the development in the EU in Vietnam and the UAE trade, industry, and investment relation in recent years. UAE is now the biggest and the most important partner of Vietnam in the Middle East and. Africa area. UAE ranks one of the top 10 largest foreign economic partner of Vietnam in 2019. The total bilateral trade volume between the two countries reached approximately 5.2 billion US dollar. In the investment sector, in the recent time, investment cooperation between Vietnam and UAE has focused on the oil and gas field between the P 
VN and PVN of Vietnam and Mubadala of UAE. However, we are highly impressed with the technological development of UAE in the field of renewable and saving energy. UAE now, nowadays is one of the leading country in the world in developing the renewable energy, such as solar sectors and wind, solar in uh, energy and wind energy, with some huge and incredible in project, projects, such as SAMS in Abu Dhabi or Solar Park in Dubai. Vietnam's government is now interested and in create favorable conditions for foreign investment in these sectors in Vietnam. Vietnam has focused, has also focused on the development of modern infrastructure, sea, land, air transport, logistics, gas and oil power, hospitalities, oil and gas related products, which UAE has great advantages. For this, for this reasons, there are a lot of opportunities for the UAE business to invest in Vietnam. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, the potential opportunities for enhancing bilateral cooperation between the two countries are enormous. Now I would like to make some recommendations to all of you for reference. First, to promote the activity in the private economic area between the two countries. So the business community of Vietnam and the UAE need to continuously strengthen and exchange the business to find out the demand and capabilities of each other. Secondly, the business communities of both countries need to use the official information channels of both sides, such as the embassy, chambers of commerce and industry. Through these channels, business will find out the updated policy in trade and investment, see the opportunities as well as information you are interested and needed. Thirdly, the business communities of two sides need to participate in seminars, workshops, exhibitions, which are organized in each country, such as Vietnam Expo, Viet Bill, Gap Food, and Big Five in Dubai, etc. So, <clears throat> Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, at this event, I highly recommend that the representatives of the business of Vietnam and the UAE discuss in details to find the demand, the, uh, the demand of each others, directly contribute to enhance the economic and trade industry investment and cooperation relations between the two countries. After this forum, I expect that companies of the two sides will keep contact to make the successful business contracts in the coming time. I would like to emphasize that with the great potentials for the current cooperation and with the sustained concerted efforts by the two sides, the friendship and the multifaceted cooperation relations between the two countries will be propelled to a higher level of development. Finally, may I wish Your Excellency Majid Sai and Gurai, Chairman of Dubai Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and all the distinguished guests and delegates good health and happiness. May I wish this forum great success. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Your Excellency. And without any further ado, I would like to introduce Mrs. Rebecca McLaughlin Instagram, anchor and executive producer at Your News to present to you the panel discussion, bridging, bridging the gap, unlocking mutual business potentials. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you so much, Aisha. A very good morning, everybody. And a warm welcome, 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 welcome to this historic forum online. 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 To, see you to see you all virtually. Um, before we get started with our panel discussion, I just wanted to touch upon some brief housekeeping notes, if I may. 
uh, kindly remain uh, with your mobile phone on silence. Also, please do send in your questions for our panel at any time. Uh, just follow the prompts on screen. There is an ask a question feature. There's also a taking notes feature, which you can use, but just be sure to download your notes before you do leave our panel discussion today. Also, as Aisha mentioned, there will be an online survey which will be sent to you after our panel discussion. We greatly uh, appreciate your feedback. Last but not least, we will be asking for your interaction. We want this to be a lively interactive debate. Therefore, we will, we will be asking some poll questions. Again, you will be prompted on screen to reply to them and I'll talk you through the process when the time comes. But without further ado, I would uh, like to introduce my esteemed panel for today's discussion. They are Mr. Nyungyang Phuc Nam. He is the Deputy Director General for Asia and Africa Market at the Ministry of Industry and Trade in Vietnam. We also have Mrs. Li Thi Hai Van. She is the Deputy Director General of the Foreign Investment Agency within the Ministry of Planning and Investment in Vietnam. And we're delighted to have with us Mr. Omar Khan, the Director of International Offices at the Dubai Chamber of Commerce and Industry. A very warm virtual welcome. I believe we're having a little bit of feedback on the line. Natural to be expected. Do bear with us. We shall weather the storm without any problems. I'm going to come to you ladies, gentlemen, dignitaries, with a specific question first. Let me start with you, Mr. Nam, if I may. Vietnam is clearly one of the most dynamic emerging countries in the East Asia region. What would you highlight as a couple of the, the country's recent and most significant achievements in economic and trade terms, Mr. Nam? Good morning, Rebecca. Uh, thank you a lot for your questions. Uh, Vietnam is uh, seen as one of the most dynamic emerging countries in its Asia region. And we have been doing well in responding to difficulties in the global and regional market, as well as COVID-19 pandemic, making our economy resilient. Vietnam often a remarkable growth of 7.02% uh, in 2019 amid the background of trade war between the US and China and rising protectionism across the world. For the first nine months of 2020, why we see economic contraction in our neighboring countries like Malaysia and Thailand due to the impact of COVID-19 pandemic we might notice that Vietnam has retained a positive growth rate of 2 by 1% for the first nine months of 2020. Why we may notice that for Thailand, uh, economic growth is uh, um, minus 10%. So the same trend is also seen in our foreign trade sector. Trade turnover of Vietnam for the first nine months still increased by 1.7%, reaching 389 billion US dollars for the whole year, and is forecast to increase by 3.5%, reaching 535 billion. So the key reasons for such notable outcomes lies in our government, consistent policy of making our business and investment environment transparent, open and lucrative to businesses and investors. Vietnam has done a good job in the sphere of regional and global economic integration. As our ambassador already mentioned, Vietnam is among a few countries that effectively take advantage of and benefit from free trade agreements. We have sites participated in 13 free trade agreements, including new generation FTAs like Vietnam EU FTA and the Comprehensive and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. And those FTAs provide greater market access for many products of Vietnam. So Vietnam has also been praised for trip response and success in COVID-19 combat, 
And up to October 26, 2020, Vietnam has uh, only 1,168 infected cases of COVID-19, of which 1,057 patients have recovered. And its success makes Vietnam becoming a safe place for doing business. And uh, various uh, transnational corporations have been relocating their factories to Vietnam, including, among others, Apple, Google, Microsoft, LG, Panasonic, and Hanwha, etc. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Nam. Yes, indeed, you touch upon COVID-19. We will, of course, revisit that topic uh, uh, just shortly in our panel discussion, so pertinent to our, our topic today. Um, but, but Mr. Omar, let me come to you next with an opening question. Why is the Dubai Chamber of Commerce and Industry looking at ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, and in particular, Vietnam? Uh, well, thank you, Rebecca, for having me, Your Excellencies. It's great to be here today. Well, we're looking at ASEAN in particular, uh, in, in general, and Vietnam in particular, because over the past uh, decade and a half, they, a lot of the countries there have been overshadowed by their big brothers to the east and west, whether it's India or China. But in the meantime, there's been a lot of tremendous uh, growth and progress. If you, I found an article in Gulf News that said uh, the GDP of Vietnam in 2004 was 40 billion and our trade was at $119 million for non-oil in that time with the UAE. And now that's uh, the, the GDP has increased six times, but the trade between UAE and Vietnam has gone up over 60 fold. That, that is 6,000%. As, as, as uh, Mr. Nam mentioned, a lot of the indicators, even uh, the World Bank has indicated that uh, Vietnam is, 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 is outlook for the short to medium term is, is positive. And if you look at the chart for the G GDP growth trend, it's been quite uh, much more stable than it's in its neighboring countries. And even the currency, the Vietnam Dong as well, has been continuously gaining strength. So there's a lot of uh, opportunities and we have not dived in deeper, and this is why we're seriously looking at ASEAN, and we're definitely looking at Vietnam in particular for many different facets, whether it is, it is uh, the trade, uh, we're looking at strengthening the exports from the UAE because it's very strong exports from Vietnam in the bilateral relations. So we want to study that. We've worked, for example, through our offices with China, and we have been able to export certain very niche products as well into China, which was we thought was impossible. So this is happening. But also we want to change the subject and, and, and the topic and look at services, look at know-how, look at innovation, and also investing into uh, Vietnam. We've always been a, a trading nation, a facilitating nation as well. But now it's time, if we look around, uh, a lot of the investment, the imports are coming from Asia, but there are uh, the number one FDI investor is the United States. Then you have also Germany and you have many different uh, entities. So uh, countries, excuse me. Uh, so we have to ask the question, why are we not there? And that's our job through the Dubai Chamber and its International Offices Network. We want to get deep dive into Vietnam and understand where we can enter into the country in addition to facilitate trade service uh, services uh, and exports and re-exports. Thank you, Omar. A deep dive into Vietnam. We will tap his head on, head on, handle the discussion. Um, Mrs. Van, let me come to you next. Um, from the investment and planning ministry's viewpoint, what's the most important thing to highlight in your current policy and strategy with regards to Dubai and the UAE? Thank you, the moderator. So from the point of view of planning investment, uh, I would like to share um, the idea that Vietnam is, is, is the right place for UAE investors to come to invest in. And I could like to share the, the point of view from OMA. Uh, until now, the UAE investor in Vietnam is growing uh, number 56 among 138 country invested in Vietnam already. That is, we can, from that uh, ranking, we can see that we have a, a lot of room to 
improves the bilateral investment between two countries. Also, Vietnam have also three projects invested in the UAE with the total resisted capital is about 970 um, thousand US dollar. It's very small number, right? So in Vietnam nowadays we have uh, more than 100 investors and um, the total resist capital is, is about uh, uh, more than 380 billion US dollar. Uh, and uh, we still uh, attract more foreign direct investment into the country and we are in the right time to have um, we uh, the government just approved the new investment law the new enterprise law and as well as the new uh, private partnership law so the the form of investment has been uh, open, not only 100% own enterprise, you can invest in a joint venture, you can invest in a private partnership, in infrastructure project, it's, it's quite a request for a large number of investment as well. So we still have um, eight reason to invest into Vietnam. Uh, as uh, Omar mentioned, that we have a stable policy and we have high and stable economic growth uh, in the past 20 years. So the average uh, economic growth, GDP growth rate is about more than 7%. And even in the COVID-19 situation, the Vietnam is among very few countries in the world you know, have a positive economic growth. GDP is just more than 2% for the first three quarter. And we have competitive production costs. We also have abundant human resources. And our population is very young. Um, more than 50% of the, uh, of the population is uh, under the working age. So we under the golden population. Uh, chapter, and then we have a huge percent potential market with more than 30, 13 uh, FTA connecting with 55 uh, uh, economy in, into in the world, and we have extensive international integration that uh, our ambassador just mentioned, and also we have open policy many competitive need incentives and the government of Vietnam also uh, approved um, a new special incentive for a big project that I think that we can uh, look at the, that at the moment and also the government committed to uh, go together with investors. So the Prime Minister um, uh, establish a working group to promote cooperation uh, of foreign investment. Uh, so the the head of, of the task force is the deputy prime minister, uh, minister of the foreign affairs, Mr. Fan Bing Ming, and also uh, include more than 10 ministry uh, as a prime minister is a member of the task force. So the task force will have investor uh, to invest in Vietnam and to do business in Vietnam to deal any problems, any issues that they might have. And this is a very strong commitment of the government for the foreign investor in the moment. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, and any kind of positive economic growth in these challenging times is very much well received uh, by chambers, industries and economies around the world. Um, to the audience I go now, let's try a poll question. 
If you follow the prompts on your screen, you will be directed to the first of our polling questions. And before we go into a panel discussion about which sectors offer the best potential growth to both Vietnam and Dubai, let's ask the audience what they think. So do give me your views. The question is, what sectors are you looking at for business? We want to take your perspective. There are four options for you to choose from. Is it agriculture and food? Is it the manufacturing industry? Is it raw materials or is it something else? So what sectors are you looking at when it comes to business? Okay, if you put in your answers, then after the next question, I will let you know the results. Mrs. Van, let me come back to you uh, quickly for a quick follow-up question in terms of uh, the key economic drivers for Vietnam's growth. You've touched upon some of the important areas. Um, Dubai, how highly does it factor in your economic expansion plan? And specifically, in light of the poll question, which sectors prove interesting or have the potential to be great economic drivers for Vietnam? So, so the, the driver for economic growth in Vietnam, I could say that um, each sector has an uh, important, uh, do their own role in economic sector, but manufacturing sector is, is the, the, the driver for Vietnam's growth, especially the, the manufacturing that direct to the, our export. So we may know that Vietnam economy is very open economy, which the, the, the total trade term is, is more, more than double on the GDP size. But for the, the, the foreign trade and uh, foreign um, economic driver for Vietnam, I could like to transfer the um, that um, Mr. Nam could uh, add something because it's the Ministry of Trade. Uh, thank you. So I want to add to my colleague. So our foreign trade is one of the key factors uh, driving economic growth in Vietnam in recent year. As you uh, all know, um, we have uh, great achievements in terms of uh, foreign trade volume in the expansion of our foreign markets. And we have, uh, if we are among very few countries that have a um, uh, free trade agreement with uh, the last markets in the world. Omar, let me come to you now. Um, following up, thank you, Mrs. Van. Thank you, Mr. Nam. In terms of Dubai's imports from Vietnam, last year they were predominantly in the electronic space. What other sectors are driving trade and investment this year? And as we look towards next year, what might emerge stronger? Well, in, in terms of imports, of course, Vietnam is a very, very strong manufacturer in, in uh, goods, electronic goods, machinery. So, so then they are very high in value. And of, but of course, agriculture, food and food security is something very important. And it's important that a country like UAE continues to diversify its access to different markets. But also, it's very important to understand, again, what we can do for Vietnam in terms of the supplies. As we said, uh, a lot of, about 80% of the imports are coming from its neighboring Asian countries, but there are many imports also coming from as far as the US. So one of the things that Dubai can do and work with is, uh, is through our, our network of Dubai Ports World, Emirates Sky Cargo and, and, and all our airlines is to divert and reroute uh, trade routes and make it cost effective and time effective for Vietnam to import through the UAE. Uh, and, and so we can bring products in from all over the world, including Africa, Europe, and different places, and make it more cost effective. Now, this is happening on a large scale through the World Logistics Passport uh, uh, Initiative. Uh, and, and definitely Ho Chi Minh City is one of the hubs for the Dubai Ports World Emirates Sky Cargo South-South Corridor. So again, this is 
another missing opportunity. And we, and we did this successfully, for example, with the tea trade. Now, the Dubai Multi Commodity Center started in 2002, and in 2005, they started the tea trading center. But now they are the largest re exporter of tea. So, slowly they have diverted the route and they've brought the access to the markets through Dubai. And this is something that we want to uh, look at. And, and additionally, like I said, uh, we help and facilitate African crop growers such as coffee, tea, and so on to go up the value chain through the tea center and the new coffee center. Now, I think it's a great time for also Dubai traders uh, and re-exporters to actually look at investing into Vietnam. Now, the main challenge that I, I, I see uh, to, to investing, of course, is ease of doing business. The Vietnam is ranked currently at 70th, UAE is at 11th. So there might be a disconnect in terms of the expectations. But one amazing thing that uh, in addition to the reforms that were mentioned today is the economic free zones that have been set up. Now, free zones are a language that UAE and Dubai, especially business people, understand. And this is very exciting news for us. And there are many different free zones being set up. And they're going to create 760,000 jobs uh, uh, in, uh, in the next few years and the GDP is going to be, uh, per capita income for those jobs is at $13,000. That's 5.4 times the amount of the regular GDP. So this is really exciting. It's a win-win situation for Vietnam. And I think the UAE can come and manufacture some of the goods themselves that they will actually import and re-export. So I see this as a great opportunity. And again, uh, visiting and hopefully after COVID, everybody stays safe, but visiting and seeing the different parts of Vietnam is very important. In addition to that, Vietnam welcomes about 18 million tourists. So tourism and service industries, we sometimes overlook and they're not accounted in the figures. I went and looked at the top 30 countries of tourists that go to Vietnam. None of the GCC countries were listed there, no African countries and many uh, Middle Eastern and North African countries were not listed there. So now Dubai can act as a very strong hub for facilitating uh, uh, tourism from those regions into Vietnam. The lowest number I saw was 21,000 tourists from Finland. So we have to ask our questions. Maybe we need to push more. Uh, and, and, and so these are some of the categories, but in terms of FDI, you can see 58% is manufacturing, but 18% is real estate. Now UAE and Dubai are excellent at developing real estate. We are excellent at creating a global international experience. And we're doing this, we're uh, creating uh, malls in Egypt and we're creating a, one of the largest African malls now in Ethiopia. So I think this is a really great opportunity and I think Vietnam is a great choice. And can, I, can I add one thing? I mean, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome the ambassador. I mean, I'd like to meet him in person when he's uh, come to the UAE. And I think there's a huge potential. I mean, the Chamber of Commerce have put a full plan, I mean, but because of the, uh, the pandemic, I mean, we delayed our plan. We, 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 we was planning to visit actually Vietnam. We have full program to bring delegation to, to Vietnam. Uh, four years back, I met the delegation who was participating in Davos, uh, the government officials. And as, Ms., as uh, Omar Khan said, I mean, tourism was in the top of the chart. I mean, when it came to investment and when it came to hotel, we have very good brands here in, in, in the UAE, Dubai where they are willing to go to country like uh, Vietnam to invest. So there is a huge opportunity. And I'd like to thank once again the ambassador for his time. And I think it would be a fantastic opportunity to meet in person when you are in Dubai. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, Your Excellency. And thank you, Omar, also for the comments. So many potential avenues uh, of, uh, of growth, uh, cooperation, development, and partnership between uh, Dubai and Vietnam, as mentioned. Um, in light of what you were saying, it probably won't surprise you to know that uh, in terms of the poll results, the question, what sectors are people looking at for business? Option A, agriculture and food, came up as 46%. And manufacturing was second uh, with 27%. So not unsurprising there, the audience in complete agreement uh, with the areas of development and expansion going forward. Um, we have touched upon the ease of doing business. I want to briefly uh, come to our panelists uh, with regards to that. Um, Mr. Nam, can you shed some light in, um, in terms of what improvements can be made in either policy terms, infrastructure, development, to ease and facilitate uh, greater investment and trade between the two countries? Mr. 
Mr. Nam, do you want to jump in or, or equally Omar? Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, so uh, you want me to answer what improvements can be made in boosting our bilateral cooperation? Exactly that. What can we do to help? Oh, yes. Um, as we monitor trade and economic uh, relations between Vietnam and UAE, particularly with Dubai for years, and uh, we see in practice uh, no barriers in our cooperation. I can assure you that. And with strategic local location combined with a business friendly policy and future forward infrastructure, Dubai is seen as a leading global trade, finance, and e-commerce powerhouse. And Vietnam also pursues an open trade investment policy to we offer one of the best business and investment environment in the Southeast Asia region. In order to boost trade investment between Dubai and Vietnam, we need to give more support to trade and investment promotion activities and to facilitate direct interaction between business, businesses of both sides. So at Excellency Chairman and Mr. Omar Khan already mentioned that uh, Dubai is, uh, have, uh, has planned to uh, send business delegation to Vietnam after COVID-19 to different parts of Vietnam to see the potential of Vietnam. And we welcome that uh, initiative and our Ministry of Industry and Trade is uh, ready and willing to receive and to arrange uh, the program, working program for the business delegation from the Dubai Chamber. Um, not yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comments. Um, COVID keeps popping up, so let's go straight there. Omar, can I ask you, how is Dubai weathering not only the human, but the economic impact of COVID-19 and the global pandemic? Well, it, it, it has been globally um, a shock to the system. Uh, Dubai and the UAE are, are, are is, the UAE is a small country. We are hyper-connected uh, country connecting east to west, north to south. So again, the impact was tough, but I think sometimes, um, whether it's 2008 or 2020, it helps us to reassess, look at how we operate and see how we can trim the fat and become more effective in a tougher world. It's like a, it's literally like a game where you have to level up. Uh, it's not been easy for everybody. And of course, we're very sad at the loss of life. Um, but we have learned to manage now because we have to connect, we have to bring in tourists, take out tourists, we have to, that's a livelihood of ours, we have to bring in trade and, uh, and so on and so forth. But I think Dubai, I've, I've compared with people who are living in Germany and in different parts of the world, what we, what we consider as a norm, uh, they consider as extremely highly effective, whether it's managing life in the, in the tourism, the education sector, or the business sector. And I think we're going to come out um, uh, very strong. And of course, uh, the healthcare sector uh, is, has really strengthened and even the manufacturing for healthcare products and is going to be something very important that Dubai plays a part in. And we're all about now getting back to business. Uh, this is the new reality. How do we engineer ourselves around it? And so, and this is why we're not letting this stop us. We're connecting here with our brothers and sisters in Vietnam. And, and we're saying, look, here's the map. How can we get from point A from, uh, to point B together? And how can we restart the economic engine? So, and you can see this when you come and visit Dubai and hopefully everything's coming back online very soon. It's exactly that. It's getting back to business. Mrs. Van, can I come to you and ask, have any opportunities in the trade, investment and cooperation space been presented by the pandemic? So <clears throat> the pandemic uh, uh, has a bad impact on uh, any economy, uh, but in, in Vietnam, <clears throat> the uh, pandemic presents both challenge and opportunity in the trade um, sector between two sides, as well as the investment. So during the uh, the COVID pandemic, we um, we uh, renovate and we transform the promotion sex, um, uh, seminar 
all into virtual. So we organize um, the uh, investment promotion uh, seminar with uh, our main partners, uh, the US, the e Europe, uh, the from the Japanese, uh, Singapore, and, and South Korea. And and today we have the the virtual uh, seminar with investors from the UAE. So this is uh, the, the best chance to provide information on uh, uh, our policy uh, and uh, opportunities for investment from the UAE. So we established a new normal with a new way to promote investment that we will um, develop our um, website to provide information for investors, uh, not directly, but indirectly, and they look up for uh, all information from our website, and we organize a virtual seminar to introduce our investment promotion uh, and policy. So in terms of the, the sector that doing business it is quite interesting for me that the 46% that the, the UAE could like to invest in agriculture and food products. That is a very, very interesting information that we all welcome. Uh, that is a special sector that we could like the foreign investment to invest in into Vietnam. And we have, uh, uh, we introduced the, the new in incentive scheme for that kind of, of sector in Vietnam. So please come to Vietnam, we are welcome. And an, another information is that uh, due to the, the close border between, and it's not uh, open the, the normal fly between two countries, but if the investor could like to come into Vietnam, just contact us, the foreign investment agency, we can organize the special uh, mission for you to explore the opportunities to come to investigate the business environment in Vietnam. So we organize for other invest investors throughout the world. So even between the, the pandemic continue, we still organize uh, investment mission that foreign investors still come and invest into the country. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're rapidly running out of time. So very briefly, if I can ask for some takeaway thoughts, just a quick takeaway thought, Mr. Omar, please, I'll come to you first. Uh, well, the, the, the takeaway here is Vietnam has all the right indicators, even in these tough times. Their inflation is at, uh, in 2019 was 2.8. The currency is good, the GDP is good. And like I said, there's a lot of opportunities in, in sustainability, education, tourism, manufacturing, real estate. And I think our job, as well as, as the chambers and the investment authorities, is to raise the profile of Vietnam and make people aware and put it on the radar. And that's something that Dubai does very well in Dubai Chamber. And I'm very happy to say that our recommendation is to also open on first office in ASEAN in Vietnam. How exciting. Fantastic. We very much look forward to the opening of the chamber over there. And there, ladies and gentlemen, delegates, dignitaries, we have to leave our conversation. And as Omar was just saying, so many potential areas, oration, partnership and future investment going forward, not least in the, the food, agriculture and food security space. Very interesting uh, that that's been touched upon. Um, everybody has touched upon also key phrases. We're getting back to business. We have to adapt to this new normal, and we very much look forward to strengthening ties, uh, economic, bilateral, and uh, cooperative ones between Dubai and Vietnam in the coming years. It just remains for me to thank again my esteemed panelists, everybody uh, watching online. Thank you for your participation. Um, the platform will remain open for networking purposes, and delegates are free to stay online and connect with each other. Also, let me just mention that upon logging out, you will be sent uh, the video of today's panel discussion along with the survey. And we would just ask you to take a couple of minutes 
to share with us your input. It's invaluable to have your feedback. It only takes a few minutes and we look forward to seeing you again for one of these fantastic discussions. Shukran Jazeera, thank you so much everybody. And there we shall end our discussion for today.